If you smell, what the bird is barbecuing. G'day, Jabronis. It is the bird back with you again. Welcome to our week one battle for the uh, GPC. The um, I forget. Is it? I don't know why I'm wearing my headphones either. I don't really need to wear them. I believe it's the Global Pokemon Championship. I can't remember the exact alliteration, but regardless. Um, my first week battle was actually up against a good friend of mine, Jarboss, and the Lincoln Staraptors. His link will be down in the description below, as always. And he had a pretty scary team. We actually both had sand teams, uh, which was really crazy for first round matchup. And um, we both had pretty solid matchups against each other. Like he had a few things that could destroy me. I had a few things that could destroy him. So let's kind of go over that first. I have a Charizard Y that uh, his team doesn't really deal with too well. He has an Alem Mola and a Zapdos that kind of deal with it, but they're not exactly great checks. Zapdos is still getting to a KO by Flamethrower, and Alem Mola, if it's not Assault Vest, is going to be subjected to Flamethrower plus Solar Beam doing a hell of a lot, even to a specially defensive set. So. That was definitely my game plan was to get Zarbai in doing huge damage, but the big thing on his side that was scary for me was the um, Protean Greninja, which is XY though, which is really good because it means kind of low kick or the gunk shot. And number two was um, uh, the x -Bloud. x -Bloud, I had no switch for x -Bloud. My only resist was uh, Extra Drill, which I could take on a Boom Burst with, but if he turned out to be, you know, Life Orb or whatever, I would lose Extra Drill there. So definitely x -Bloud was a big, big problem for my team. I didn't want to have to face it. But uh, I, I feel that the way I've built this team, I should be able to handle all of his threats. Basically, I'm going to be doing the team builder with you for this battle, and then I'm going to be showing you the replay of the battle that actually happened. So, heading into this battle, uh, I knew there were definitely a lot of things I needed to wall. Uh, mainly, I wanted a decent special wall. I wanted a couple of special walls and a good physical wall, because he has, I feel, more special threats than physical threats. So, kicking things off, we had specially defensive wheezing. Uh, this is basically designed to do with Mega Sceptile, pretty much first and foremost. Um, I wanted the T-Spikes because his only form of hazard removal is the Zapdos, and I could definitely pressure the Zapdos with Kyurem plus Excadrill, and to an extent even Heliolisk, so definitely wanted to do that. Uh, the Willows is there for GP, um, it's just really nice to hit that Hippo and stuff with, and Sludge Bomb is the main attacking move, uh, because I could Willow the Bronzong, so I wasn't really too worried about the Bronzong in that state, and like, Bronzong kind of has a bad matchup against my team regardless. Um, so. I felt really good with that set. It was basically, again, like I said, it's designed to deal with uh, what looked like it was going to be a modest Sceptile because uh, he could go away with modest because my team is quite slow if I have Drill out of sand. Uh, next up, I had a mixed defensive Mew. Basically, this thing was designed to not only take hits from stuff like the Stoutland, um, but it could also take the hits on the uh, special side, so it could actually take a Boom Burst from Xplad and be able to get off a knockoff. So that was basically the way I wanted to set up this Mew, was to be able to take a uh, Choice Specs Boom Burst and then be able to knock off the Choice Specs, because that would be huge for my team if I could weaken the damage output. But um, rocks are really important because it again puts a lot of pressure on my opponent's team. Knockoff was just really nice to just get rid of items and Psychic um, was just a good strong stab to go with. Just had Roost as well, just um, you know, heal me up when I needed to. Definitely uh, was uh, a solid, solid little set. Uh, next up, we have a Spadef Excadrill uh, with a bit of HP and a bit of uh, speed. The reason for this is I have enough speed to outspeed Timid Exploit. I believe it was Timid Exploit. And I basically want to do that because on the off chance Muse knocked off the specs, it gives my drill a chance to get the kill straight away, or it just weakens it to the point where then Heliolisk, Zard, and Kiram, which all outspeed Exploit, will be able to kill it anyway. So it makes it less of a threat. Uh, I'm running sub with Toxic uh, basically because I'm running enough Spadef. To the point where an Aloma Mola with no, uh, no, sorry, an Aloma Mola with only four special attack investment cannot actually break my sub, which is really nice because I'm, ex I mean, I've got hiccups now. This is so bad. Um, I was basically expecting maybe the uh, assault vest Aloma Mola set, or you know, alternatively just the wish pass ones so like wish protect scold and then um, mirror coat for the Charizard, which would mean that. If I set up that sub and he wasn't able to break it, I could go for free Toxics and whatnot, which is really, really nice, because Toxic on his team is great. He has no Cleric, so definitely something I wanted to take advantage of with Drill, and uh, I, I wish I could have put on Rock Slide, but Rapid Spin was way more important for the Charizard and the Kyurem. But speaking of the Kyurem, uh, again, I have Toxic because it's just so easy to wear down his team, especially when his main switch into Kyurem is going to be that Aloma Mola. Uh, this is a really cool Kyurem set, though. Again, it's designed to outspeed uh, stuff like the x Bloud and uh, other things, but the main reason I have this Kyurem around is because of 
a little cheeky mind games I can play. So I'm running Expert Belt because if he has Bronzong as his primary key I'm switching, which it should be, then I can fire off a Shadow Ball on the Bronzong and does about half. And he's gonna think it actually looks like Timid Specs damage or potentially Modest Scarf damage. So because of that, he will then do the switch out to Exploud most likely, thinking he's fine with that and I'll go for another Shadow Ball happy days, but then I'll reveal that I'm actually Expert Belt, I can go straight for that Focus Blast, if it connects, Expert will be down and out for the count, and that is huge for my team to be able to get rid of it. Um, Ice Beam is just another really good coverage move for his team, uh, his only resist really is the Bronzong, so it's just, uh, and Greninja, but you don't really count Greninja, so it's pretty pretty solid. And also because I'm running the Expert Belt, I can definitely bluff Scarf, which is nice too. Next up, and this was a mistake on my part. I was meant to have Roost there as the last move on Charizard, but for some reason Showdown stuffed it up when I was trying to adjust things and uh, didn't give it Roost. So I didn't have Roost for this entire battle, which is embarrassing, but uh, it is definitely meant to be Roost there for the Charizard. Um, basically, uh, my plan with this Charizard, as you can see by the weird set, is I predicted him, again, like I said, to bring the Wish, Protect, Scold, Mirror Coat, Olamomola, and if that was the case, I want to be able to take advantage of that. I want to be able to get a free hits against the Alamomola without him being able to get away with stuff for free. And so I decided to run this Charizard set. Basically, I uh, substitute in the sun. There was no way Alamomola could break it with the Scald, which is fantastic. I was a little bit worried about HP Rock, you know, potentially if he had it if it was AV, but regardless. Um, and then Solar Beam and Flamethrower is just perfect coverage for my opponent's team. Flamethrower because, uh, especially with Zapdos having pressure, I do not want to have only four potential fire moves hit on my opponent. I want to be able to hit him as often as I can with the Flamethrower, because obviously with Hippo being around, I don't have to wait to turn the charge Solar Beam, it not kill Hippo, and then get stone aged and killed. So I decided to go with more PP for more, you know, GP. But yeah, then finishing off the team, we have the primary wall breaker, I think, of this team. If Zard goes down, this thing basically just cleans up house. Obviously there is a Sceptile and a Greninja that will outspeed it, but Helios does not care. It is a Life Orb Solar Power set. Hyper Voice, Dark Pulse, Falls, Switch, Grass Knot. Just perfect coverage as well. Um, Hyper Voice obliterates everything. Dark Pulse pretty much gets the kill on Bronzong. Grass Knot destroys um, the Hippo. And then just Volt Switch is the only electric move that I really, really needed. Uh, it punches through everything on my opponent's team. And with Solar Power as well in the sun, it's going to be absolutely decimating. Solar Power basically gives it a Choice Specs boost on top of a Life Orb, which is just absolutely ridiculous damage output. But that's basically the team, guys. And so what I'm going to do now is jump over to the actual battle that happened, and uh, we're going to go from there. But yeah, very, very happy. Oh no, that's not meant to be there. Very, very happy with the team, and keen to see how it goes in this battle. All right, guys. So as you can see, we have the battle here, and uh, straight off the bat, two huge things. One, he does not bring Exploit. That is amazing for my team. That thing absolutely rips my team apart. So I'm so glad it isn't there. Um, and then he also didn't bring the bronze on, which is also really nice because that was the main resist to Helios Hyper Voice as well as Kyrem's Ice Beam. So that is really, really nice for my team. As you can see, I think I have a really good matchup here as well because he has a Hippo, um, XY Protean Greninja, Mega Sceptile, Snoutland, Zapdos, and Alemba Mola. So right off the bat, I could see that um, the matchup was, uh, was really solid. But one thing I had to keep in mind was he had two very fast mods. I had to try and break them down before I could get him with Charizard and take advantage. Because obviously both uh, Greninja and Sceptile could have rock moves to take care of it. But once they went down, Charizard pretty much destroys the rest of his team. So that was the basic game plan going into it. So we're going to kick this bad wave. I decided to leave with Kyurem. Leaves with Greninja. The reason I left with Kyurem was because if you look at the entire team, the only thing Kyurem has a bad matchup against when it comes to a lead is the Sceptile. Um, I can take any hit from Greninja because Greninja might have the Rock Slide, which is fine. I can eat it up because I'm a Kyurem, and he can't risk getting like Draco and then destroyed. So his only switch in here is the Alomola. I predict that really nicely here and go for the Toxic, and we're going to be able to Toxic the Alomola turn one, which is fantastic. I'm going to make a double here into my Weezing. Basic reason I did that, guys, is because he had one of two plays there with the Alomola. He could either, you know, go for the Miracle, he could go for the Toxic himself on the Kyurem, try and wear it down. Because obviously that thing was going to be my main switch into Zapdos, so I definitely thought that would be a good play for him. Um, and also he could score, but basically all of those options, Weezing is the best way to deal with all of them, so I decided to go straight into it. I will also allow me to do, even though he's going for a Wish, I'm just going to go for a T-Spike because uh, it's really important for me to get up these hazards at this point of the battle. Um, as he's going to choose to... I, I go into Kyurem here because I know Kyurem's from Men's Zapdos switch, and he goes straight for the Vol Switch. I was a bit surprised. I expected him to want to go for... Um, uh, I expected him to want to go for the Defog there because Toxic Spikes were annoying and now everything else on his team is grounded by the Alova Mola. Like, everything's basically going to get damaged here by the Alova Mola, which does come back in. Takes a little bit of damage. I'm just going to take the opportunity to go back out to Weezing and I know I can set up another um, layer of Toxic Spikes here. And I was thinking maybe Zapdos doesn't have Defog, 
which could be really, really nice at this point. So I'm going to go for T-Spikes again, just get him up and see if he has it. But he does have Defog, and I'm like, that's that's fine. I'm going to go for a Sludge Bomb. And that's definitely a specially defensive Zapdos designed to deal, I believe, with the Zard, as well as um, Alamomol is probably trying to do. So he goes into Greninja as I get up another layer of T-Spikes. These layer of T-Spikes can be important, but one thing that dawned on me now is I was like, crap, I don't really have a switch in for... Protean Greninja. Like, I knew it was going to be there. I knew it was going to be a threat. And I did have Kieran that could put pressure on it. But as you're going to see, this is a... I believe it could have potentially been a modest life orb. Or, like, just a special attack boosting life orb. Because that does a lot. Now, the thing is, though, I make a good bluff here. I didn't really have a switch in, so I decided to go for the Focus Blast. Knowing that full well, I will die if I stay in against the Greninja. But because he hasn't seen an item because I'm an expert belt, I have bluffed the Scarf. And he doesn't want to lose Greninja this early. So that's really good for me. That was... A very very important turn in the course of this battle. As I'm in against Elo, and I can just go safely as my Mew, because I knew I was going to wish. And what I can do is I can take advantage of this situation to get up my rocks, because Zapdos is going to come in, which is fine. I'm going to get up my rocks here regardless, as the wish does come true. I'm going to pull a. Uh, I'm going to stay in first and get up a knockoff. This is really important to weaken the Zapdos. And then what I'm going to do is do the hard switch out to Drill, because I can see from the move so far that Zapdos, you know, probably has. Roost, Defog, Volt Switch, and then one other move. Even if it's Heat Wave, Extra Drill can eat it up. And I eat up that Volt Switch like it's nothing, obviously. And I'm going to predict the Hippo to come in here and go for the Toxic. He could have easily gone into Aloe, but obviously, if it's an offensive drill, Aloe doesn't really want to deal with it, whereas Hippo does. So I get off the Toxic there, which is huge. I'm going to double back into my Weezing here, because best case scenario for him is just setting up rocks. And what I can do then is set up another layer of T-Spikes, and that's going to force his Aptos to not want to Defog as often. Um, just because with the layer of... Uh, I actually get the Sludge Bomb first, which is bad on my part. I, I guess I was predicting um, Zapdos or something else to come in, but I should have just gone for the T-Spike there. Because at this point, even if Zapdos had come in, I could deal with it. Um, so Ninja's in now, and I'm a little bit worried, because obviously Ninja is Ninja. Uh, as he goes for the Dark Pulse, does a lot to my Weezing, takes the Life Orb damage, and I get off the Sludge Bomb here. I get a really good amount of damage. I don't get the... Um, I don't get the poison, but I go into Kiram because I'm like, okay, I can play around this quite nicely. I go into Kiram and he goes to the Dark Pulse and kills me. And that's fine because I'm looking at the range of health. Greninja can only come in one more time. So I decided to go into my Healer and pressure it out because there's nothing you can really do to hurt it. And here I get a little bit lucky. So I get a crit with the Hyper Voice. I don't think it mattered too much because if you look at if you look at Healer right now, it is a timid life orb Healer It is basically destroying anything on my opponent's team. Even the Alamomola is not coming in and taking a hit. Because I am Life Orb, I can also just straight up Rindo, like not Rindo, <laughs> I can straight up Life Orb, Grass not destroy that Hippo. So basically something was dying here, and it was definitely going to be a 2 KO on the Zapdos regardless. So he either had to make the choice to preserve Zapdos, but he also said after the battle that he would have sacked Zapdos here anyway, because he had no real way to roost against the rest of my team. So he ends up sacking off Zapdos to the Hyper Voice here, which is really, really good for us to be able to do that. As he goes now into the Greninja, so this is obviously a bit of a 50-50 play on this turn. So Greninja's going to die no matter what it does here, and I had to think about it, because... Weezing was obviously a sack that I could have gone for, but the thing is, because I have Pain Split on Weezing, I kind of want to keep it around. Because if a Lomomola was at full health, or even Hippo, I could get a free Pain Split off on them, and especially on a Lomomola, that would be huge to get my Weezing back up to full health, as it is meant to be in my Sceptile check. So, that was definitely something I wanted to keep in mind, going into uh, these last few turns. And, um... I decided here that my best play was to go into Drill. Drill didn't really do too much at the end of this battle. Uh, he didn't bring a lot of the things that Drill would capitalize on. And so I figured Drill was just the safest bet if he goes for the Dark Bolts because I have Spadef and I can eat it. He actually chooses to go for the Rock Slide here, which is perfect for me. I could obviously absolutely eat it up. That was a crit too. He takes the Life Orb. I get my healing back and he dies to poison. So a kill for Weezing there because of the Toxic Spikes. Hippo's going to come in now. This turn I make what would seem a questionable play, but I need to explain to you why this is probably the most appropriate play that I can make at this point. So, I'm basically going to make the decision to sack off my drill here. But the reason I do this is because if you look at my opponent's team right now, the Greninja's down, the Zapdos is down, and he now has no switch-ins to my Charizard Y. And I'm like, okay, this is this is it. This is time. So I'm going to actually go for my spin, knowing full well he's going to click EQ to kill me. But I know that my Zard can come in and start wrecking house now. So what I do is I actually go into Weezing first. Now the reason I go into Weezing first, guys, is because um, I, I don't really know. I should have gone into Zard first and just gone straight up for the attack. I think what the player was trying to make was going into Zard first, then doubling back into Weezing. Just because I felt that I could scout for the Stone Edge that way and whatnot. And he wouldn't go for rocks against the Zard by coming in initially on him. And it would weaken him a little bit further with a Toxic as well. Um, since it was a Toxic from Drill, not the Toxic from Toxic Spikes. 
So they make a really bad play here. And if he had got a rocks with Hippo on this turn, I definitely could have been in a lot of trouble. But I do make the double into Charizard. So basically the reason I did that was again, like I said, for damage if you set rocks that turn. Wasn't too bad, but he actually goes to Aloe, and now my strategy that I plan to do is going to pay off. I Mega Evolve, get up my Sun, and now I'm going to get up my Sub, because he's going to go for the Mirror Coat. It does absolutely nothing. Now, at this point, I really should have realized, looking at the Aloma Mola, that it hadn't revealed an item from what I could see, so I could have gone for the Solar Beam, but I decided to go for the Flamethrower, because it was still a 2 at here. He goes to the Wish, and this is fine by me. Like, my Sun is wearing out a little bit, but I can still pretty much destroy this thing. I don't want to give anything on his team a free switch in. Um, this turn I probably should have gone for the, um, I should have gone there for the Solar Beam, but I decided not to as Miracro is going to break my sub. If I go for the Solar Beam there, I pretty much got another kill with Charizard, so that was bad for me. As Sceptile is going to come in, I'm fearing the rock move, and my only switch in really is Mew. So Mew is going to come in, as it turns out he's a physical Sceptile. Now this Rock Slide miss is not going to matter. This Rock Slide was doing probably about 15 to 20% because I am a very, very defensively invested Mew as you saw. And as you're going to see from the damage output that's about to happen, it really, I don't feel, affects the game that much because um, he's going to SD as I'm going to go for a Psychic. Now, from the range of that damage from Psychic, 39%, after he takes Poison and one more Psychic, he's going to go down regardless next turn. So it all comes down to if Mew can take this uh, attack. I couldn't remember if Sceptile learned knockoff or not, so that was definitely a scary factor. But I knew Mew could eat up any plus two hit from Sceptile here. And if that went down, if Sceptile went down on this turn, then I pretty much had the game sealed with Zarbwire in the back because he didn't get those rocks up with Hippo. So, I think I still had the match won even without that, but he goes for a Leaf Blade. As you're going to see, it does 65%. So, if a plus two Leaf Blade is doing 65% to my Mew, there is no way that a Rock Slide without any boosts is doing over 35%. It's just, there's no possible way. Even with a crit, I don't think that's even possible. So, there was no way Mew wasn't going to be able to live and take out the Sceptile, and that's huge. The Sceptile being down, like I said, with rocks not being up, means that Zara just wins. But this point, I do make a questionable play, but I also feel like it's the smartest play that I can make. I allow my Mew to stay in here, and if he wants to set up rocks with Hippo, then that's totally fine, because at this point, I realize it doesn't matter. Like, the Swift F drop there sucked, but it didn't matter, because all I needed was damage on the Hippo. Like, if he was designed to be able to deal with my Zard, it wouldn't matter, because if I damage the Hippo, like, to this point now, there is no way even a Spadef Hippo can live a Charizard Y Fire Blast, or Flame Tower, sorry. And that means that either Hippo's gonna die or Stoutland's gonna die, and if either of them goes down, the game is won at this point. So even if rocks go up, my Zard is chilling at um, 70%, so it's coming in at 20%. I don't believe Stoutland can get access to Quick Attack, and even if he did, Hippo would go down first. Stoutland can't live a Flame Tower from Charizard, so I'm basically in a position where I can't really lose. He's in a Stone Edge, I don't know why he didn't EQ, but I guess maybe he was predicting Zard, as I'm going to be able to fire off another Psychic here if I want to, but he decides to go into Stoutland. I wasn't really uh, too sure about this play. I felt like it was, you know, it, it kind of made sense. So Stoutland's going to be able to kill me here with a return. That's that's fine. I can take that. That's, that's, that's all good. He's Life Orb as well, which is great. Okay, this was huge. The fact that he was Life Orb also saved my bacon, because if he was a Scarfed Stoutland, there was a chance I still could have lost this battle. Um, because Scarfed Stoutland outspeeds the rest of my team, and return pretty much sweeps from here. So definitely got a bit fortunate there that he did decide to be Life Orb. I can go show my Zarbwine and get a kill, because like I said, even out of Sun, Flamethrower is going to destroy this Hippo's life, and that is going to open the door basically for it to be a 2-0, because I'm not going to choke this game away. I know Zard is my win con. I'm going to double into my Weezing to let it die to the facade, and at this point, even I could have sacked off Heliolisk or Zard, um, because he would die to poison next turn. But I'm going to be able to pick up the 2-0, as Zard's going to come in, pick up its second kill of the game with that Flamethrower, and... We're going to be able to lock in a 2-0 win um, for the opening match of my GPC season, which is awesome. Um, I definitely feel that there was a little bit of hacks, which is unfortunate, but I feel like the hacks didn't change the battle at all. Even if I didn't get the speed F drop on Hippo, I was just trying to weaken it to the point where Zard could come in and win. Um, and yeah, like at that point, the moment that Mew went down, Zard came in and picked up a kill, and he had to choose whether he wanted to keep his Hippo around for no reason because it lost to basically everything, or if he wanted to keep his Stoutland around, which again, since it wasn't Scarfed, couldn't outspeed anything, it would just die anyway. So it was definitely a 50-50 regardless where he would have lost at that point. And I definitely feel like I made the right plays at the right times and got the result, which was really great. I feel it was a very close battle and uh, hats off to Jar for a really solid match. But uh, we start off really well here. Um, two kills to Weezing for its Toxic Spikes kills, which is awesome. I love that a lot. Um, also, actually no, you know what, uh, technically that is not a toxic kill for Weezing on the Alamomola, that is a toxic kill for Kyurem 
for that turn one toxic that I just remembered. Um, so Kieran with one kill, Weezing with the kill, Mew with a kill, and then um, two two kills. No, yeah, Weezing still got the one kill for Greninja. Two kills for Charizard. Um, and a kill for Heliolisk. So yeah, I got like, I spread my kills out. I got four kills with um, single mons and then Zard with the two. So the only person I think missing out on a kill for this match was Excadrill, but he still did the most important thing in this battle, which was getting rid of those rocks. So we start our season off on the right foot. We nab ourselves a 2-0 victory. Really good way to start the season. Hopefully we can keep this momentum going into next week. That is going to do it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you felt that my team was good or, you know, if you thought I could have done anything better, all that jazz. And uh, like this video because I really uh, appreciate the support. And then also go check out Jar's channel, like I said in the description. And finally, if you could subscribe to my channel if you're new, then I would really, really appreciate that. But anyway, guys, this is The Bird, and I'm out of this video.